Now let's get you deeper into the specs of this mid-size touring motorcycle. The handsome three-quarter fare GT comes equipped with a water-cooled four-stroke twin-cylinder engine. That engine has twin overhead cams, four valves per cylinder. It pumps out 90 horsepower at 8,000 RPM with a nice 63 foot-pounds of torque at 5,800 RPMs, according to BMW. That is matched with a six-speed gearbox. The final drive is the low-maintenance belt type. That combination will net you about 69 miles per gallon at 55 miles an hour constant, or 55 miles per gallon at 75 MPH. A cool stat. The chassis itself, well, the forks are your standard telescopic fare, 43 millimeters around, with a single shock in the rear managing the single-sided swing arm. The frame is cast aluminum, bridge type, with the engine as load bearing. Now, the seat height is one cool story because it's adjustable. The range from a low 30.1 inches to the middle 31.5, and for you long-legged folks, 32.3, and it's super easy and quick to adjust. That's really a nice feature. The wheels are standard 120-17 front, 180-17 in the rear. The brakes are floaters up front, 320 millimeters with four-pot calipers. The rear is a 265 millimeter single piston, also floating. But on this nice ride, ABS is standard, a must in the touring category and a nice option in the midsize range. The one we tested came with touring cases on the side, a very convenient add-on but there's a host of other options available from BMW and the aftermarket. It comes in three colors. We tested the dark graphite metallic. All told, the base will set you back just about 11,980 bucks. Well, there's the BMW F800 GT. Now that you're intimate with all the details of the motorcycle, let's talk about the riding impressions. The last couple hours, I've been bombing around Southern California, some really tight, twisty roads, got into the city a bit, so I had stop and go. Got a very good feel for this motorcycle. Let's start with the front end, okay? First of all, let's look at those brakes. You have twin piston calipers that are holding on to those twin discs in the front. Confidence inspiring, work great, initial bite is right on, and if you're like me and like to trail brake into the corner, has great feel. The front forks themselves, okay? For this motorcycle, when you're riding on those really bumpy roads, riding on the freeway, these forks are great. They're really well sprung for a guy my height and my size, so six foot two, about 190 pounds. But at the end of the day, when you get it in the twisties, it starts to get a little bit uh, kind of loamy, like a little bit cushy. However, it doesn't really mess with your confidence at all. The bike still feels very planted. It's, it's really right there where you need it to be. You get a tremendous amount of feel from the front end. Let's move up to the instrument cluster. With the way I sit and see, being a tall rider, the instrument cluster, super easy to see, especially with the, the twin analog gauges. You have the tachometer and the speedometer. Took me a little bit to get used to the speedometer, I will admit that. Had to really start looking out for it. But when you move to the handlebars themselves, they're nice and wide, give you good confidence and good leverage, and also all these switches that you need to work to activate anything you need to on the motorcycle. It's available and it's right there for you. Even this nice little knob over here, check this out. You know what this is? Yeah, that's grip warmer. I didn't have to use it today, all right, in California, but you hit that and it heats up the grips. But the engine configuration of being that inline twin, BMW is able to make this motorcycle narrower than some. So when you throw a leg over it or both legs over it, you'll notice that your legs kind of wrap around and you really feel like you're part of the motorcycle. So the seating position, is outstandingly comfortable and confidence inspiring at the same time. And of course, this bike is designed to go on some longer trips. The seating position says it all, but also these saddlebags. How easy is it to work? No problem. Put the key, turn it, hit that, open it up, all right? Load all your gear in there, a little pop, it's all sealed and ready to roll. Take the key again, put it in there, turn it 180 degrees, pull the lever, and off you go to the hotel room. And how easy is it to put back on? Ah, BMW, those engineers. It is that simple. So now you know most about the motorcycle. Let's talk about where it matters, the drivetrain and the power plant. Okay, so come on back to the back side of the motorcycle. No chain on this motorcycle. It's actually a notched belt driven. Didn't even notice, really a nice, smooth, comfortable ride. It's low maintenance with that single-sided swing arm and there was no drivetrain lash which I thought was very interesting. The throttle response from the fuel injection was spot on. 
The only real drawback I see to this motorcycle, in my opinion, is it's just under horsepowered a little bit. I'd like probably 10 more horsepower out of this machine because when you really get into the tight, twisty stuff, you're very active with the transmission, which by the way is, is excellent. The transmission on this BMW is excellent, but you're very active with it, which I enjoy shifting, but a lot of people out there want to put it in a gear and be able to kind of roll on and roll off the throttle. So I would say another 10 horsepower and this thing is absolutely perfect. But overall, I really enjoyed riding the F800 GT. With the bags and with the riding position, with the fuel economy of this motorcycle, this is one that I would love to take like out for a weekend, you know? Throw my lady on the back and go have a really fun weekend of riding the motorcycle because when you hit the concrete and you hit the twisties, this thing can do it all. So make sure you get down to your BMW dealer and check it out. And remember, the seat's adjustable. So even if you sit on one and it's too high, we can lower this thing and you'll fit perfectly on it.